Hey, welcome back to my channel. Um, so I just finished a journal and I used up a lot of my ephemera and put some of like my tag making that had been in the back of my head that I really wanted to try some embossed tags. Um, I had put all of that on the back burner, but today I decided to go ahead and have a play at those. And I do understand that not everyone has an embossing machine, but I did emboss these um, using regular cardstock and inks and my embossing machine. I turned these into lovely little tags. Super cute, super duper cute. Um, so I do have one that I've already embossed and I used Tim Holtz um, die for that. Um, so I'm just going to set that to the side and we're going to have a play at actually taking these and using a stencil. So if you have a stencil, we're going to do that. And please ignore that because I guild with some of my stencils and I try to clean them off as good as I can. So we're going to use up some scrap book pages. Um, I have a couple scrap pieces of paper from some kits that I had worked with that I thought um, the pages were cute and I kind of know like the color scheme of what my next journal may be. But I also have these paper pads that I haven't really been using um, that I wanted to see if maybe they would make cute little banners. So it's super easy. I took some um, different um, uh ephemera kits that I had and I just fussy cut some images and this one is shabby dabby doodah um really love her stuff and I thought using the corsets and umbrellas it was just something different that I could have a play with but I really liked these little flowers um so that's what I did on those tags but I also hadn't used my Tim Holtz people in a while so I took those out for this video so we might make one with that so we will go ahead and move these out of the way I just wanted to show you what we were kind of working on today um, and I did originally have holes here but I really liked and wanted the whale tails so I just covered up my hole with a whale tail and these I just distress the same way and I've actually used three inks to get this color so um, I distress the well tells to match the tags as well so we're gonna go ahead and cut our cardstock to how we um, the size that we want the tag and I'm gonna be honest I don't even use this thing properly I'm just going to use my eyes and see how I want the tag and just make sure my lines are straight because I've used this <laughs> I've used this cutting thing and thought I've cut a straight line and I hadn't and I saw something pretty interesting last night a girl in order to kind of make her things shabby oh see that's so cute and kind of distressed she just took her scissors and distressed the edges super cute that's a neat idea um, and I'm just going to cut this down a little bit because I don't want it so, so tall. And if you have another tag, you can kind of use that as a guideline. So let's take this one and we'll do it a little bit taller. Just kind of eyeballing it. And I want to show you guys just a cool little trick. I'm not sure if anybody else does this, but I just take it in order to get my cuts even and I just kind of fold it over but I don't crease it and I just cut the ends so that it's even on both sides and I don't really think that I want to put a hole there so I'm not going to you could put a hole and a reinforcement or just a hole and then you can do an eyelet but I don't I want to make some more with well tells. I don't know. I just really like the tabs. They're like different tabs because I understand not everybody has a well tell punch. So there's just different ways that you can do tabs. Like this one. Look at how cute that is. And I just cut it and made a cute tab. Just cut the paper myself. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to kind of distress the edges like that girl did. 
I really like that. That's interesting. I've never seen anybody do that before. She said it kind of makes it like shabby and like vintage looking and it really does give it a pretty nice effect. So we'll stop playing with that and we'll go ahead and what we're going to do is I honestly, I kind of want to coffee stain this a little bit. So I have coffee stain here um, and what I'm, I'm just going to take this embossed paper and kind of come off to the side, coffee stain it a little bit. And I'm going to dry it with my heat gun. You can totally skip this step. You don't have to coffee stain. But it just gives it a nice color. So I'm going to try to speed up this part of the video. You could have coffee stained beforehand, and that's wonderful, but I didn't have anything coffee stained. Um, I'm going to be honest, I have autoimmune, and whenever I mess with a whole bunch of coffee, I literally feel like I have fire ants crawling all over my body. So, sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. <laughs> And then next, I think that we're going to take our stencil. That's dry enough. So just coffee stained it a little bit, added a little bit of color to the page. I really like that fraying. We're going to take our stencil. And kind of see how we want it and then I think that we're just gonna do this with um, some vintage photo that's that's cute like this so I have scattered straw fossilized amber ground espresso and vintage photo um, I think that we're going to go ahead and take some vintage photo, like I said, and do our stencil. So we're just going to kind of, I take it going at a circular, a circular motion. And then some people clip their stencil down. I've never really felt the need to do that. You can come along with any color that you want, but today we're going to be working with vintage photo probably the fossilized amber and then I hope I'm you guys can see let me move this over here and then I am going to take some of my gilding paste I don't have over here and well, I don't know because, no, we're not going to use the gilding. I I feel like the gilding paste works best um, on embossing for the parts that are raised. So we're just taking our stencil and we're creating a little background. You see how that kind of shifted a little bit? So when I'm done, we can see if that really affected it. And my ink pad is so worn. So yeah, I, I feel like inking is extremely soothing, but we created a little background there. And what I am gonna do is go ahead and take my vintage photo and come around the edges. And ink up the edges. I think that I will be using that 
fray technique with my scissors a lot more. That was a super neat little trick that I watched last night. I can't even remember what I was watching. Okay. Then we're going to take our super cute already. I'll probably end up setting. When you coffee stain and you dry it like that, it kind of makes the paper do that. So I will flatten that out with some books probably. I just set my heavy books or some Bibles on um, my paper that does that. Whenever I coffee stain it, it levels it. Okay. So I have both of these open. Let's make sure I'm using the right one because one I don't like as much. And this one is, well, good Lord. This one looks like scattered. Yeah, scattered straw. We're going to take this one because it almost gives it, I noticed, almost gives it like a kind of a gold tint. And I don't play with my inks nearly as much as kind of what I should. So we're just going to take it and then kind of just get it in the background circular motion and then we're also after we put this down we're gonna go over it with some ground espresso it's already given it a nice color and to be honest with you I really could have skipped the whole coffee staining I just feel like on the back it might no I could have skipped that whole coffee staining process so yeah, that whole part could have been skipped. You don't have to coffee stain it to get this effect. Then I'm going to take my, this is my vintage photo, I do believe. This is my Gran Espresso because I use it a lot more. Can't even see. No, that's vintage photo. Let's say both of these are vintage photo. Uh -uh, Gran Espresso. It's a little bit lighter, I feel like. And I don't want to really, my hands are so inky, um, cover up our stencil. That's kind of why I did the stencil a little bit darker and vintage photo was a little bit darker. You could have came with a totally different color and that would have been good too. Um, but we're going to be putting the banners on here made with our book pages and cardstock as well as our little fussy cut. This is just our background. So cute. Really, really like this already. And then the fraying could be done at this point. And um, honestly, I don't even know what color that was. <laughs> it's one of the browns. Honestly, I go back through and then do my edges again. So that's kind of how we can get that pretty gold vintage look. So pretty. Really like that. And we just use a stencil. Right? Okay. Um, and then sometimes what I do is I just, I can go like this. And then this is super cute, but, and you just create like a little collage. So you just tear your little book page that you have, make sure your writing and the words are appropriate for tags. And then you can kind of do something like this and then do like another layer and that. But I want to go ahead and do another banner. So I'm going to take my very burnt. That's why I'm using these pages because I can then come through and kind of cut these. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to create a little banner. I also have some trim. I don't like that little blank part up at the top. So I'm just cutting this down and getting it. I mean, you can use your cutter. I'm just getting it as even as I can. Okay, and then what I do is I just take this and I fold it without putting a crease and I'm not gonna cut this way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna cut towards the crease. 
bam, even on both sides, okay? Then I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna be kind of gentle as I'm inking this because it's book page that's been coffee stained and inked. And this one, it tore a little bit, but it's fine because we're gonna glue it down and we're also probably gonna have either another layer on top of it because I'm not sure if I want this bottom piece to be, or this to be the bottom piece or the top piece. But then we have our book page. I'm kind of feeling like I want to bring in a little bit more brown. That's too like yellow for me. So I'm just taking my vintage photo and I'm going around the edges and then kind of in some. I wonder what it would look like if we, let's see. If we added some more stenciling. I'm trying to see how I had it because then you can shift it, which I, well, I can kind of tell I had it here. Okay. So you can kind of shift it. To where it adds like a little kind of 3D effect. Let's do that and see what happens. Ooh, scored. Okay. So I'm just going to take my ink. <laughs> mm -mm. You never know until you try. Thank you for crafting along with me. We might not even do this one as dark. We're just putting some more in the background. That's why I really, honestly, I don't have, this was like the best, like cutest stencil I had. I just really feel like the variety of stencils is kind of crappy. I'm extremely happy with my embossing machine and one day I woke up, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning and I was like, oh, I want to emboss and I tried to do all those like random different techniques that you can find on YouTube where you emboss without a machine by getting the paper kind of a little bit wet and using a stencil and then like rubbing uh, or like rolling like one of those um, baker's like roll pens that I didn't have or like a jar or something down like very heavy over a stencil to like emboss. Yeah, none of that worked for me. So I finally broke down and bought the embossing machine and I swear like I'm so excited. Been doing, playing with doing like some die cuts and stuff also. So we just added another layer of stencil cute. Um, I feel like we can put our book page maybe here. Let's see. I want to, I had already kind of cut some of these banners. So let's see what one of these banners looks like. I would have to do, see, this is super thin. You could layer them. I kind of actually really like that. Okay, so we're going to go with that. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Take my hot glue. And I'm going to glue here. And put it down. Then I'm going to take my glue and then glue there. Could have done it differently, but I didn't want to lose how I had it, how I had it done. And then you can, oh, y'all, I didn't even ink these. 
I'm going to cover that up with trim so that doesn't really matter, but I know for a fact, I'm glad this isn't glued down, please ink your edges first. I know I want these inked. 100%. Do not like how these, I mean, I like the way it looks, but looks so much better with the edges inked. So we just kind of did like a little layer banner and I showed you guys how to cut at an angle to get that very even, very, very even on both sides cut. So you can leave those flapping. I'm gonna glue some of them down. And then I'm really big on kind of using up doilies too. You could set a doily underneath it. I've done a lot of that, so I'm just playing with kind of different things, tired of kind of doing the same thing. And then honestly, we could kind of still use a book page. Maybe come through and make it a little bit thinner and we'll just do a very layered banner. I like that. And then my book page is pretty burnt. Then when I'm done with this, before I start putting my trim and stuff down, I'm going to put a layer of Mod Podge. I feel like it kind of sets everything and it gives it like, and it's the matte finish, it's not the gloss. So I am going to take that right now. Oh, I don't have it over here did something to my neck so it's very hard today to turn so that kind of really sucks um and yeah so i've been using this today for yeah i did it like that okay so i've been using this little brush today for my Mod Podge and you would really have to wait on this to dry and you see how it's kind of dragging some of that yellow around I like that look I'm going to take my heat gun to this because I'm too impatient and I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to dry. But I have that just nice little coat and honestly I probably shouldn't be touching it like that. I'm going to add some more vintage photo. Jeez. I don't know what I did to my neck last night. I wish that my gun, y'all, I'm over here with my gun, um, would reach over here, but where I'm working at, it's, yeah. So that spot that I kind of raised up because I had my little fingers on there, I'm going to ink it again. And hope that I can freaking fill that spot in without you being it. I honestly, I don't even know what happened there. That I've never really had that happen. Well, I'm going to continue with this tag. Maybe it'll just add a more distressed look. So that's what we have so far. I really like the Maj Podge. Um, I feel like I kind of want like a bigger image on this. I do have these little umbrellas cut that's way too small. Um, all these little pieces are too small. I want to grab my little people. I haven't worked with my little people um, lately. And kind of see what we have. I like when they're propped up like in a certain way, like on things. <laughs> so cute. But I don't want anything, I really like these guys. I don't want anything too close to the top because I am going to have my whale tail. 
So maybe if they were, but when you do that, to me, it looks like they're floating. So I might just want one that's kind of standing or even kind of like this where her arm is there. That's cute. I honestly, y'all, I have not worked with these people in so long. Some of them I don't like. Some of them I feel like, oh my god, they look so creepy. I know I cannot be the only one with that. So if her arm was up differently, like that way, I would kind of want to use her. Again, I just don't really want them so close to the top. Look at those people. Oh, so cute. I, I really like those boys. I really like those boys. Let's see. We can do that. That looks cute. I like those boys. We're going to go with the boys. But we're going to put our trim first. Oh, if we put the boys over here, it would cover that little spot. But I feel like they'd be too high. I don't know. But, and then it's like too much over there. So we're going to just go with that. I have this cute trim. Don't have very much of it left. It was like in my random scrap pieces. But I really liked the way that this trim looked. So we're gonna go ahead and put our trim across the top, or not the top. We're gonna put it right there. So I'm just gonna take a line of glue, put a thin little line. Lay that down. I glued it before I trimmed it just so eliminated the measuring there. I love that. Those little boys are so cute. They're cute, but I just don't know. I also have these really cute like little flowers. We're gonna go with the boys. We're just gonna go with the boys. I know a lot of people have these, so. I'm gonna go with them. And you can leave these flapping. I left them flapping because I wasn't sure if I wanted them flapping or not, but same thing I did with the other ones. I went through and I laid them down so I do a lot with doily and I do think I want some of my doily down but what sucks is that I don't have any brown or any like really coffee stained right now so I'm gonna have to like really ink this up So what you can do to get some color on that, and it's doily, so we all know, be careful with that. But I did like the way that the doily looked down at the bottom of that. So we're just going to kind of ink this up. Typically, it would not take this long if you had some of these things already done up. Just adding some color. This one, honestly, I had embossed this, so it's an embossed doily. We're 
we're gonna raise that up a little bit and then kind of just see how and where we want it. I think I want it covering the whole bottom. Let's just see. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. So I'm just kind of folding it so I can see about where I need to cut. And this you could have done beforehand, but I wasn't, I mean, we're just going along. That way the Mod Podge, you can set it. And kind of raise that up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue just on that part. And then a little bit like in the bigger areas. Y'all know what I'm talking about when it comes to the doilies. How it has the holes and stuff in it. And we're just going <laughs> to... I can hear one of my kids in my garage messing with my dumbbells. Pretty sure it's Connor, my youngest. So I'm going to go ahead and glue my little banners down because I'm flapping like that is just like really not working for me. So I'm just putting glue, a little bit of glue up underneath that and then I'm just going to kind of rub it down. That will need a little bit of glue or what you could do is take some Maj Podge. I say some, but that was like a lot. Oh my gosh. So take Maj Podge, not your whole container, and get some Maj Podge on that doily also. I am going to take, again, my heat gun to it. Had we known we were going to use that, we would have done that in that other step. So... I want to, the more I look at this, I want to create a little ruffle and put a little ruffle there. Pull in some, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could use pink. Oh, I have all that over there. Let me see what I have over there before I start putting into this roll so we can use up some of our scraps. And we have that. And that piece that we can use. Let's see what this looks like. My hands, oh my gosh, are so bad. That's cute. Because it'll pull in some color. That's cute also. Mm -mm. I like this one. Okay, so I'm just going to take our glue, put a little line. We'll end the ruffle there and see if we want to continue. So, pinching, placing, scrunching, and pressing. Just creating a loose type ruffle. If I need to add any more glue up underneath, I'll do so. So I'm going to put a little glue right there where the ruffle didn't take because it took me too long to get my paper onto the glue. Typically I do small steps at a time. I'm going to put a little bit more glue right there. 
and then just tuck. Super cute and easy little ruffle. Add some dimension to the paper. Gonna cut it because I want the ruffle to end there. Put a little bit more glue right up underneath there and scrunch it together. So that's our tag so far. Very cute, pretty easy had I not made a mess with what I was doing. Then we're gonna create a little tab there. I do have some well tail punches already cut um, but I'm really kind of wanting to drag some of this pink in. It does need to be thicker because it is a tab. And for whatever reason, I have misplaced the ones that I have already made. Look at those little people. Y'all, I'm sorry I'm in my scraps over here. We need something with a little bit of pink. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go with this one and I'm going to distress it. So I'm going to do a whale tail. And then I'll also show you how you could just, you could just do a tab and kind of fold it. It's, obviously it's way too big. And it's really freaking crooked. Apparently I cannot fold or cut today. But after it's distressed, I mean obviously it would look better because it would match, but you could do just a tab that's like that. And then obviously it freaking wouldn't be crooked. I so wanna cut this. So it would be like that, you would not do that. Or, I mean, you could glue it together. But you could do a tab like that. You can come around and take, like, your corner rounder or just kind of cut it at an angle to where it's, like, a little circle and do that. You don't have to have all of these different tools. You can create your own. And in all honesty, sometimes that looks best when you create your own. Okay, so I'm gonna take my well tail from my scrap paper that I have been working with. And as you can see, it already had, I just didn't wanna waste it. it. I had glued and backed it on a different card stock and I did not like the way that it turned out. So I am gonna use, come along with the same colors and make it match that. So I'm gonna take some brown, not sure if it's ground espresso or vintage photo. Distress that up. Put a little bit of brown towards the middle. Adding some color. Come along the back side of this tag and do the same thing with the vintage photo because if you write on the back, I mean you kind of want the back to match the front a little bit. Just ink the edges. I have made a huge mess. Sorry, we were kind of all over the place with this, but thank you for crafting along with me today. I had a lot of fun making the first tags and even this one that I made. Take some of the fossilized amber, come through 
just get a little bit of it on there. And then I'll decide which side I want to be the front. Just, just inking. That's all we're doing is inking. I didn't glue the people's heads all the way down because I knew that I was going to come along here and put a whale tail. Okay. We're going to do this side for the front. I'm going to put glue on the front and then the back side. So just a line of glue. Done with the round part. I need to try to get to the grocery store today. And since they're up so far to the top, I can't really put a bow or a flower or anything right there. But I will probably take something. So the back of our tag has that coffee on it. I will take something just cutting where I didn't really glue it evenly inking a little bit more I am going to lay a book on this we could have step, skipped that whole coffee staining process one pro step I would not skip, if you don't have Mod Podge, get it. It's like $4. And it just kind of brings everything together. So cute. That turned out really cute. Do you want to put maybe some bling? I have pearls, but... I hate working with these pearls. They drive me nuts. It's the kind that are like glued together. That's cute. I like the pearls. Let's also kind of see. I'm going to take a strip of my bling see what that bling looks like i like that bling way better okay so we're gonna put this bling at the top and y'all when you add this bling it looks so cute sticking out of your journal and that added something just way look seriously y'all watch this like just use your thing it adds so much seriously and obviously we're gonna cut that but it just I mean I'm cutting it just so y'all see that I could have cut it down already so that it, oh, I probably maybe should have done that one with this. Um, I just find it so much easier to glue and then cut. The same thing happened with my other ones with these beads. So I am going to have to take a tiny dab of glue. And glue some of these beads down. God, this one's being ridiculous. Come on. It's wanting to stay. Get off. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue. You see how it comes off that? Just going to take a little
bit of glue and push it up there. <laughs> and freaking take a shower covered in ink right now with all of the ink that we used. I really like what that doily added. Very much like what the doily added. So that's our tag. Super easy, super cute. <laughs> I'm wanting to add like a flower or something there. Super easy, super cute. A little tag. Just using up some stuff that we have. I either want to put a flower there and that one is small or I want to use one of my already kind of made uh, that's another thing that I need to make I need to make some more um, wax seals I like the wax seal. We're gonna put a wax seal there. You can put um, a flower, one that's bigger than that. That that one looked too small to the eye. Cute. So super easy, super cute, kind of Tim Holtzy, little paper people tag. So that's what you can do with your stencils, with your inks. I feel like honestly, I mean, to me, the embossing looks better because it adds another layer and dimension to the paper. But I know that not everybody has an embossing machine. You can either do the stencil yourself or use a decorative paper and then skip all of that. But I just feel like creating your own. I mean, it just, yeah, very cute. So um, drop a comment below um, if you liked it, any tips or tricks that you can share. But I hope that you guys have a good weekend and create as many tags as you can and create a mess.